Welcome everybody to another video in the Makito series from Tales from the Jar Side. My name is Ken Cousin. I'm the author of the book Makito Made Clear from Pragmatic Programmers. And this is another video talking about an issue in Makito that makes it a little bit more difficult to learn than it might otherwise be. That issue has to do with a little thing in, in in psychology known as the paradox of choice. The idea of the paradox of choice is that when faced with too many choices on how to do something, it ra raises the anxiety level of a consumer and they sometimes don't want to do anything at all. Now, in this particular case, what I want to talk to you about is the fact that there's actually two parallel APIs in Makito for creating and setting the expectations and validating your mock objects. So I'm going to show you both and give you an idea where they're used and then you can decide which one seems to appeal to you the most. So this is the home page for Makito, makito.org. And if I go to the javadoc.io site, the site for the javadoc documentation, you could see here is the Makito class in the org.makito package, and most of the methods that we use in Makito come from this class. But you'll also notice it has a direct known subclass called BDD Makito, interestingly enough. Now, I want to talk to you about a particular system. So what I'm going to do here is look at a RESTful web service from OpenNotify.org, known, how how, known as How Many People Are in Space Right Now. So this is the URL. It only supports GET requests, but it doesn't do any monitoring of you. It doesn't collect any information, doesn't require you to register. So it's very nice, and I use it in the book. So the basic output you get from this is a big block of JSON data that has a message of success, a number indicating how many people are in space, and a collection called people, which is a series of name craft combinations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a system that looks like this. I have an Astro service, which is the class I want to test, and it uses a class that I call a gateway, or more specifically an Astro gateway, which is the one that accesses the server doing networking and parsing all the data into Java classes. So since I want to test not just the regular way of doing that, but a couple of different HTTP libraries and also some JSON parsers and things like that. In order to test the service in isolation, I'm going to create a mock of the Astro Gateway. That way, on a test-by-test -test basis, I can set it to do what I want and make sure the logic in the Astro service is working properly, which is going to group everything into the number of astronauts aboard each craft. So here is the code. Now this is the Astro service test, and you'll see that I have an annotation on here, the normal JUnit 5 extension, extend with Makito extension. By using this annotation, I'm telling Makito to pay attention to this mock annotation and this inject mocks annotation. And what Makito will therefore do is to create a mock object of my gateway and then inject it into the Astro service, and I provided a constructor for that purpose to make it easy. Here is the mock response I want back from the gateway. I basically say that there are, are seven astronauts in space, we got our message was success, and here are the assignments. That's my combination of name and craft. So I have two on aboard Babylon 5 and four people aboard the USS Cerritos, and Poor Ellen Ripley on the Nostromo. Hopefully, hopefully she knows not to set down on LV426. Any rate. So this test uses Makito in the more traditional manner of using methods from the Makito class. This is known as setting expectations on the mock. When the get response method is invoked on the gateway, then I want it to return that response that I just showed you. Here, I invoke the method I'm trying to test. That's get astro data on the service, and that returns this map. Now, I'm using another library called assertj, which makes it very easy to work with maps. This one says I can assert that on that map, it contains these three entries, the two people aboard Babylon 5, the one aboard the Nostromo, and the four on the Cerritos. And then finally, I can verify on the mock that its get response method was invoked exactly once. See, verify would take a second argument, 
where I would specify the number of times, but times of one is the default anyway, so I can just write it like this. So this is what you'll encounter in practice the most. Now, what happened moving to BDD is that the Makito people said, let's take a look at BDD Makito, that they really like this idea of given and when and then as the mechanism for doing behavior-driven development. And they have a link to the Wikipedia page if you're interested. The problem is, as you just saw, they're already using the method when in Makito, and it's to do the given part. It's to set the expectations. It's not to trigger the change that they want to check. So they had to do something else. So what they did is they added a BDD Makito class that uses the method given instead of when, and instead of then return, they say will return, and that sets the expectation on the method call. Then they test, well, they invoke the method and then test it. And here they're also showing before they do a verify that you could throw exceptions if you want. Given on that mock, you invoke the foo method that should throw a new runtime exception. And again, they check that happens. And if you want to do verification, it uses the then method with a should, which is where the times goes in. And that's how they verify that the test class called the mock methods the right number of times uh, in the right order as well, if you want to do that. Now, let me show it to you in my system here. So using BDD, I'm using given for the get response on the gateway and will return on the mock astro response. Then I call my method I'm testing. And once again, I could verify that the data coming back is correct. And the verify uh, statement looks like this now. Then on the gateway, we should have invoked get response exactly once. See, we don't have an overload of then to put the times in there. The times go inside the should method if we want. And then we could also check if we want the failure mode. So here is saying when we call get response, then throw an IO exception saying network problems wrapped inside a runtime exception. So I'm using another mechanism from assert J that could say, oh, Runtime exception is thrown by get astro data with cause instance of IO exception with message containing network problems. You see a search is really nice. I'm thinking of doing a video series on that as well. At any rate, and then I verify that on the gateway, get response was invoked once. All well and good. And here's the same thing for BDD Makito. So given get response will throw a runtime exception wrapped around an IO exception. And then this is the standard JUnit way of testing for an exception, JUnit 5. When I call get astro data, assert it throws a runtime exception, which it returns, I can get the cause and check that the cause, in fact, was an IO exception with the string network problems. And then again, down here, then gateway should invoke get response exactly once, or the get response method should have been invoked on the gateway exactly once. So there you have it. There's the two mechanisms. One is when and then and, and um, verify, and the other is given and will, and then then down at the bottom with a should involved. So which one should you use? And the answer is whichever one you prefer, <laughs> because here's the bottom line. You are going to encounter both in practice. The vast majority that you'll see in existing code will likely be that when and verify approach. That's very, very common. But a lot of people really like the BDD ideas and like the fact that Makito supports that mechanism and therefore will write their examples in terms of given and then. There's some examples, for example, in the Spring Framework documentation that use the given and then approach. So I would say it's worth it to know both of them but they're pretty close to just global search and replace one with the other, except for that should business that throws it a little bit differently. But that's the bottom line. Use whichever one you want, and you can see you can change your mind on a method-by-method -method basis if you like. You just have to statically import both the Makito class and the BDD Makito class. So I hope you found that valuable. If you like this, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And thank you very much for your attention, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.